You've identified that you need a consultant and you have in mind the type of consultant that you are looking for and uh, how they're going to be able to address your needs and you've started finding a consultant, which is awesome. Uh, the next step in this process is gonna be interviewing a consultant. In today's video, we're gonna get into the process of how you do that, types of questions you wanna ask and what to expect as you go through the process of interviewing a consultant for your business. Hi everybody, I'm Brandon Gustafson. I own and operate two assisted living facilities and I created this channel to help people just like you learn the ins and outs of investing in assisted living. Welcome to Assisted Living Investing. Welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I talked about the process of finding a consultant. How, what are some resources for you so you can go out and find a consultant for your business to help you get up and running. Uh, one thing I really wanna point out is obviously this, this, this channel is very centric on assisted living, but I try to make it so that these videos are gonna be helpful to any small business owner just in general to help you through the process of getting up and running. So take what I say, and if you're trying to do a different type of business, just take out the word assisted living and insert the type of business that you're doing. Um, I do assisted living, um, obviously, um, but I have a few other businesses uh, that I work on, you know, uh, my YouTube channel, I'm working on doing a franchise. Uh, I'm also going to be looking at trying to get in a transportation company that will be adjacent to um, one of my assisted living facilities. So I'm really trying to build out a lot of this type of a network. And so the tools that I'm giving you are going to be applicable to a lot of those different areas. And if you have interest in, in learning a little bit more about those things, or if you have like, you know, insight into processes that you've gone through as you're trying to get your business up and running, I'd love to hear from you. Reach out to me on assistedlivinginvesting.net. We'd love to have a conversation, see if there's anything we could do to maybe partner um, going forward. I uh, just would love to have that type of a conversation. So sorry, just wanted to give that little bit of a plug before I get into the topic of today, which is interviewing a consultant and what that process is, is like and what you could um, expect to happen as you're going through this process. So the initial conversation that you're going to have with them, you know, once you've decided that you're going to hire a consultant and you know the type of consultant that you should hire, you need to initiate the, the contact. And I'll reference my video up above about the type of consultant um, that you should be looking for as you're going through the process, you know, how do you select a, a consultant? I'll link that up above so you can go ahead and watch that video. If you're wondering how, how do I go about uh, identifying what my needs are um, to watch that video. So as far as initiating contact, there are really kind of two ways that you can do that. The first is email. Uh, most consultants will have an email address on their website um, or they'll at least provide you some contact emails where you can reach out to them and start getting a hold of them to help you, you know, start initiating that contact. And the other one would be to reach out to them on the phone, give them a call. Um, so just give them a quick call, uh, explain who you are, what your needs are, and what you're looking for, and then set up a more in-depth conversation with them um, in a few days or something like that. You're, if you're cold calling somebody, reaching out, the chances of them having 30 to 60 minutes to really sit down and dig into it with you is not very likely. Just be very respectful of their time. Hey, I just want to give you a quick call. I'm looking for a, you know, a consultant to help out with my assisted living facility. Um, is that something you could help me out with? Can we set up a call um, here in, you know, in two days on Tuesday or, or whatever it is um, to, to help get the ball rolling. Um, it, those are the two best ways to start initiating that contact with a consultant. And the other thing that I would point out there is, you know, like I, I mentioned this a little bit, uh, but you want to really make this initial conversation very just short and sweet. This is the high level stuff that I need. You don't need to get into all of the details yet. That's what that kind of conversation that's going to be a little bit down the line is going to be for. Um, so you just want to, you know, make sure that this is a quick conversation. You're getting what you need out there. See if it's a good initial fit and then go from there. Now for that big conversation after you have that initial conversation and uh, to be clear, there are going to be a handful of consultants that are just like ready to go right from that initial call and you're going to jump into this bigger conversation from the get go. And that's totally fine. 
Um, this is why it's important for you to kind of prepare. This is the stuff that I need so that you, if, if this does happen to you, you're able to really dive in and have a conversation. Um, an example, I had a, a consultant that I reached out to via email and said, hey, I, I need a consultant. I'd love to have a quick conversation with you. Um, here's my number um, and then what's your availability she called me 10 minutes later and we had an hour-long conversation so like it could happen to you where they're just ready to go immediately and you're already having that big conversation so do your research make sure you have an understanding of exactly what you need so that if this comes up and you need to have this big in-depth conversation it's going to be something that's very easy for you to do um, from the jump and you're ready to go and and you're prepared to have a good solid conversation with them now once you've set up this time for that initial conversation let's just use this as an example you you've done that initial email or quick phone call you set up the time um, you want to make sure um, like i mentioned that you come prepared to have this big conversation you want to build yourself a bit of an agenda these are the different types of things that um, you know I want to, to talk about um, as I go through this conversation. This is to help you kind of stay on task. Um, and you know, like I mentioned, it's probably good that you kind of have this agenda built out prior to giving people a call because you never know if somebody's going to have an hour to just give you right off the you know right off the bat. Um, so you could include some of the following topics. Uh, in your agenda as you're building this out for the conversation that you're going to have with this consultant. So number one is to uh, a get to know you conversation. Um, so share your experiences, your background, the situation um, with the consultant and ask them to do the same for you. Just like, let's get to know each other. Let's spend five minutes. You know, I'm an, an owner of an assisted living facility. I live out of state. I have this facility. Uh, we got into a problem. Um, and I need some help kind of clearing up the plans of corrections that, that came out of that survey. Or I'm brand new, I'm trying to get started, I really wanna get into assisted living, um, and I've got the house selected, um, you know, I, I've got funding is, is kind of in place, we're, we're down that road, and now I just need somebody to kind of help me out with the policies and procedures and, and make sure everything is just gonna run good from day one. Or it could be something, you know, hey, I want to get into assisted living, but I don't know how. How do I find a, uh, you know, a house? How do I go and talk to a broker? How do I uh, get SBA funding and things like that? So these are the types of conversations that I would help out with um, when I have the capacity to bring on new clients and things like that. So, uh, you know, this is what I need. Let's have this get to know you. Um, conversation and then you ask them to do the same for you um, you know what's your what's your experience tell me a little bit about um, your work in consulting what's your past experience you know, what what type of thing have a really good solid get to know you conversation it doesn't have to be long five minutes is probably sufficient but it really kind of sets that boundary sets a really good base for you to start having a good relationship going forward um, so just make sure you take time to get to know the person. The next one is going to be your needs. So number two is uh, your needs. Um, so you want to lay them out very clearly. Um, if it's plans of correction that the state has given you, you want to say, here's the five items that the state has told me we really need to improve on. Um, or it could be, hey, I'm going to email you after this meeting the different plans of corrections that we have. If it's I need to get policies and procedures in place, at, you know, lay that out for them. You know, we're a brand new facility. We're purchasing an existing facility. Um, I know that the policies and procedures are there, but I need somebody to like look at them and make sure they're up to current standards and, and different things like that. Uh, maybe do some editing with me and kind of working through the process, helping me build in systems that are going to help, uh, you know, help me be successful at running my facility. Number three is the timeline. Um, so what is the timeline that you are trying to work on? Um, are you trying to close on a deal and you need it done soon? You know, this is like a two month project, um, start to finish and everything is going to be good. Is it the state has given you a timeline to work with and you need to be with this consultant for three, six, 12 months, um, that you need to have this relationship built in so that you're complying with you know, whatever state has, has told you you need to do. Um, if there's any kind of a deadline, you want to make sure that you're communicating that. Just be very clear up front. This is the timeline. This is how long I anticipate our relationship to last um, so that um, they have a good understanding of, of what they're getting into and what they're going to be committing to um, as you go through the process. Number four is um, the price. 
So you want to make sure, and, and I think it's appropriate to ask what the price is. It's common that a consultant is not going to be able to tell you off the top of the head. A lot of them are actually going to probably say, let me um, take this back and let me think about it a little bit. This That's a common thing um, for them to just be like, oh, you know, I need to think about it and give you a quote later. Totally okay. But it's appropriate for you to ask, you know, how much is this going to cost? Um, what's it going to look like for me financially to hire you and to, to work with you? Some of them might tell you, you know, it's an hourly rate. Uh, my hourly rate is 150 bucks. Um, or it could be, I do kind of a retainer fee and it's $1,500 a month and then you can use me as much as you need. Um, it just depends on the consultant and how they want to get things set up. So number five is just questions. So if there are questions that we haven't outlined uh, already above, then make sure you have those listed out for the types of questions that you have for the consultant. Um, are you able to be on site? Is this going to be kind of a more of a virtual consultant type of a relationship? Um, those types of things. Um, how, how are things structured? How much of my time do I have? What's your preferred method of contact? Those, those are really good questions to ask as you go through this process and try to get things set up with the consultant so that you have kind of a good ground base um, view of how your interactions are going to go, how this relationship is going to look, and you know, just answer any questions that you have about the process and what it's going to look like. As you're going through that conversation, those five different topics that I put up there for you, make sure that you are taking notes, um, writing up a recap of the call when you're done um, so that it's fresh in your mind, so that you have the notes to look at. You're likely going to be looking at multiple different consultants and it's a good idea to kind of keep notes and, and see what you're thinking in the moment so you can go back and review them and then say, yeah, I really liked this, this individual. Um, this person was pretty good. I think they would help us out a lot, but I, you know, communication style wasn't, wasn't great. And so I don't think I could work with them, but this one seems to me all the needs that I have. If you're looking back at this three weeks later, uh, two weeks later, whatever, um, you might not remember those things. So taking notes in the moment is going to help you review it. And so when it gets to the point where you're really comparing the different consultants, you're going to have this kind of built in uh, notes and things like that. So you can really evaluate them and see where things are at. I did this. Um, we had narrowed it down to actually three different consultants and had a lot of different notes and things like that. Went through the process and then we finally picked one um, based off of the notes that I had done. Um, that helped us really get a feel for what we wanted to look at. So uh, just good um, process there. Now the next thing that you need to look at is a document. So it's quite possible that the consultant will ask you for different paperwork um, that, that they want to look at. So you know, uh, different state orders um, or progress in securing funding for a project when you're looking um, at a lending process with a consultant. Uh, So it, it, I would just come into this expecting that, uh, you know, a consultant's going to ask you, hey, do you have any documentation for where you're at in the process? Because they don't want to waste your time and they don't want to waste their time either. They want to make sure that, you know, it's something that they could actually handle. So visit me actually on assistedlivinginvesting.net if you're interested in using me as a consultant on something like an SBA 7A loan. So that's the type of consulting at this point, again, uh, as a recording of this video in the first quarter of 2022, um, that I am kind of offering at this point. Uh, down the line here, later in the year, hopefully, I'll be able to do a little bit more of the operational type of consulting uh, and helping you build out processes. That's one of the goals that I have um, for you on this channel is to build out some, some really good and useful tools. Uh, but visit me on assistedlivinginvesting.net so you can kind of start, you know, getting a feel for what that might look like and how we could build out some of those relationships. Um, now, if the consultant requests documents, get them to the consultant as quickly as you possibly can. Um, so just like when you're working with a lender and I'll uh, uh, reference a video up above, uh, you want to make sure that you are extremely responsive um, and that you are over communicating. Just hedge on the side of talking about things consistently and frequently so that um, there's just clarity and it just it's going to make the consultant be a little bit happier um, if you're responsive and getting things done it's going to make them feel like oh yeah they they actually want to do this with me they're willing to work with me so if you get into this relationship and uh, you have not been responding and you're not answering questions and you're just kind of being lackadaisical 
um, the consultant's going to do the exact same to you. They're not going to be as responsive and it's just going to result in a bad kind of just tension filled relationship. You don't want that. So make sure that you're responsive. The consultant will do the same for you. Um, that's really just kind of solid advice. Just make sure that you are over communicating and that you're responsive in, in getting things done. And then uh, following up. So after you have that big conversation with the uh, with the consultant and you're getting those documents over to the consultant, make sure that you're following up with them. Um, you know, ask them if they have a quote on your project. I think after a week, three to five days, it's appropriate to say, "Hey, I just want to make sure you know you got all the documents. You're able to review it. Do you have a do you have a quote for me? Do you have a price for me?" Um, just kind of keep that conversation going. If they didn't give it to you already in the call, uh, it's probably just a good idea to ask that question. Um, do they have the capacity to take on your project? Don't just assume that they have time for you, even if they you know, call, answered the call and you had that 60 minute conversation right off the bat, doesn't mean that they have the capacity for you. Um, myself right now, I've had to turn down a few people and I feel horrible about it, uh, but I just don't have the capacity. If I took on another thing right now, um, my wife would kill me for one. Um, and then I, 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 I don't know when I would sleep. And so I just, I don't have the capacity to, to bring on another project right now. And I feel bad about it, but I also have to take care of me. And same with the consultant. Um, they've got to make sure that they are in a good spot and, you know, that they're not overburning themselves um, just because you need help. And that, you know, you just have to be understanding of that. And it's okay. And I'll say, you know, the reason for that is it takes a lot of time for a consultant to get into the mode, into the mindset of working on your project with you. Um, so, and it takes a lot of effort. It's a, it's a big lift for them because they're not coming from the exact same location as you. Um, so they're having to jump into this brand new and, and try to figure it out. So you just want to be understanding of that as well. Like, and it's okay if they say no. It doesn't mean that they're a bad person. It doesn't mean that they wouldn't love to work with you. It doesn't mean that they're the wrong consultant. It just means that right now, this isn't the best time. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're going through the process of trying to find this consultant and, and trying to get um, things in place. Uh, another question would be, when can they get started? You want to ask them, hey, you know, I, I would love to work with you. Um, when can you get started on the project so we can start working together? Uh, are you able to start, you know, January 1st or do we need to wait until next Tuesday or whatever it is? I, I keep using Tuesday. I'm not sure why. Uh, but, you know, just kind of keep a, an eye on that. When, when can we get started on this project? Another point to just kind of take into consideration is don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Um, don't just ask one consultant. Make sure you're talking to several. I've talked about this, I think, previously. Um, if I have a space, I'll, I'll put it up in, in a card here. Um, when you're talking with lenders, uh, you want to talk to a bunch of, of lenders and make sure you have a lot of different options out there. Same with consultants. Uh, when I had to hire a consultant, I reached out to five, six, seven consultants uh, to just kind of start having a conversation. We narrowed it down to three, and then from there we really made a decision. Um, it just made it a lot, the process just went so much more smoothly when we did that. So just make sure that you are looking at about a, a lot of different options because there's just gonna be different styles and different, um, you know, different styles in the way that they work with you and different styles in how they approach the work as well. Uh, so you just wanna make sure that you're finding somebody that's a good fit. Um, you want to make sure that you're getting the best person that's going to meet your needs and match your culture. Uh, I also don't think that it's a bad thing necessarily to let the consultant know, you know, I'm, I'm talking to a few other people. So, you know, at this point, I'm just kind of trying to get a feel, especially really early on in the process. I think it's appropriate to just, you know, let them know, hey, I'm talking to a few other people um, as well. Um, it's come a practice that you do that and then it shows that potential consultant that you're very committed to making a difference in your situation. They're gonna look at it and be like, oh, okay, so they, like, I'm not the only person they reached out to, they're talking to a few different people. They really wanna tackle this thing. Um, I probably should, you know, I, I should give these guys some really good consideration. Um, that's how I would view it as a consultant um, and others that I have talked to um, kind of feel the same way. Um, so don't be scared to just let them know, you know, hey, I'm, I'm talking to a few other people about this process um, as well as you're trying to make a decision. Um, and then even if you're talking to multiple consultants, you still want 
um, to make that decision quickly. You don't want to drag this process out. You want to be respectful of their time. You probably need to get things figured out as well um, a little more quickly. And so just make sure that you are doing that. Um, just don't, you know, don't make this a two month long process. Don't try probably not to even make it a two week process. Try to get through this quickly, make a decision so that everybody can kind of get back to their lives and, and to their work. In my next video, we're gonna get into the process of hiring a consultant. So go ahead and watch that video. If you are interested in learning more about investing in assisted living, make sure you visit me on assistedlivinginvesting.net. I have resources up there. You can set up a call with me, have a conversation, um, and kind of see where we might take our relationship uh, just as a, you know, since I'm a consultant and, and trying to help you out through the process. So make sure you visit me again on assistedlivinginvesting.net. And remember, it doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. Just keep making progress step by step by step. If you keep making progress, I promise you, you will be successful. Thanks for watching and have a great day.